As we get closer to the trade deadline, we're keeping an eye out on potential trade partners for the Sacramento Kings. This episode, we're focusing on the Washington Wizards and Kyle Kuzma, who some Sacramento Kings fans have had interest in. Remember, Kuzma was nearly a Sacramento King a couple off-seasons ago in the failed Kings and Lakers trade. And to help break down a potential uh, trade between the Sacramento Kings and the uh, Washington Wizards involving Kyle Kuzma. Brandon Scott, one of the hosts of the Locked on Wizards podcast, will join me right here on Locked on Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Time for another episode of Locked on Kings. Hello and welcome into Locked on Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season long today presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. It's the official sportsbook of Locked on. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on today to get started. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I'm a Sacramento sports reporter and producer for ABC 10 News. And we're back on our trade partner search here with the trade deadline approaching. And I've talked about before on the Locked on Kings podcast how if I'm the Sacramento Kings approaching this trade deadline, I do not mind having more of a minimalistic approach with how well things are going for this Kings group as a whole right now. I expect any trades that they make to be minor. However, there might be some splash moves out there and and is a splash move for the Kings acquiring Kyle Kuzma from the Washington Wizards. At the end of this podcast, after this interview, I'm going to share my thoughts and feelings on the potential of acquiring Kuzma, my thoughts on if Kuzma would be a good guy for the Sacramento Kings to go after. I'm saving that for the end of the episode because I really want you to not have my preconceived idea going into uh, this conversation that I have with Brandon. I really enjoyed speaking with him. It's the first time he and I have uh, done anything together. One of the hosts of the Locked On Wizards podcast but gives us a really good perspective uh, and gives us an idea of, of maybe how open-minded the Wizards are to just getting deals done. And that's a little apparent uh, by the Rui Hachimura trade uh, that they pulled off with the Los Angeles Lakers yesterday. Uh, We'll also get some of the insight and some of the uh, thoughts on that move as well from a Washington perspective. So whether you want the Kings to trade for Kyle Kuzma or not, I hope you enjoy my conversation with Locked On Wizards host, Brandon Scott. We had our first major trade of the uh, upcoming trade deadline between the Washington Wizards and the Los Angeles Lakers yesterday. And the Washington Wizards are maybe a potential trade partner for the Sacramento Kings as the trade deadline approaches, or at least some Kings fans are always keeping tabs on what's going on with Kyle Kuzma. And here to talk a little bit more about that and give us an idea of what Kyle Kuzma price tag may be, plus what the Washington Wizards are just trying to do in their approach to this trade deadline, is one of the hosts of the Locked On Wizards podcast, Brandon Scott. Brandon, welcome into Locked On Kings for the first time, my friend. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Yes, sir. Ready to talk some Kings basketball. So first off, I mean, we have to start with the Rui Hachimura trade from yesterday. Like, I'm... I'm not going to pretend that Rui Hachimura is having a phenomenal season and has tremendous amounts of value, but I feel like the Wizards could have gotten more than what they got, right? Yeah, I think that they could have got a little more. Now, if you look at the fact that he requested the trade and there was some falling out with the head coach, Wes Unsell Jr., it was a necessary move. But, I mean, if you look at Rui Hachimura, you know, he's a three-level scorer. You know, he was that scoring punch off the bench that really revitalized his team when he came back from injury. But he's not a good defender. And if you look at the fact that he was a restricted free agent who did want to stay, it was a necessary move. But I felt like it was a little rushed. So, yeah, like I said, it was a necessary, but it was a little rushed. I think we could have did better than Kendrick Nunn and three second-round picks. So. So where are the Wizards at in terms of this upcoming trade deadline? Is it like blow it up mode? This entire roster is available type thing, or is it no? We'll make we'll make minor moves or moves that make sense here or there, but there's not necessarily a sense of urgency to get stuff done. I truly believe that this team needs to rebuild, but the management from the the owner's office, uh, Ted Leon says to general manager Tommy Shepard, they're intent on not tanking. The the, the owner is famous for saying he will never tank. So they, they want to try to 
re-sign Kyle Kuzma in the offseason and try to get KP to, to extend here long term. So they're trying to build around the the solid nucleus of the solid three. Me and me and Ed call them the solid three, not the big three. So so that's kind of where they're at. They want to try to build around Bill, but the crazy part is this: is that Ted Leonsis, the owner, doesn't want to go into the luxury tax. And if you look at the current situation, we are only $1.4 million away from the luxury tax. So I don't quite see where you can have all three of these guys. Because if you think about it, with Bradley Bill being on the Supermax and trying to keep Kyle Kuzma, who is asking from around 20 to $25 million a year, and trying to keep KP, you're going to be in the luxury tax. And then if you add the fact that Daniel Gafford is going into an extension next year, you know, it's going to make things complicated with the salary cap. So it's going to be interesting where we go in the deadline. I think we need to add a bench score because with the loss of Rui Hachimura, we lost a pivotal scoring punch off the bench. So I think that's where we're at. You know, the vision is questioned by fans. We don't know really what the long-term vision is, but from what the front office is saying, they're intent on trying to build around the nucleus of Kyle Kuzma, Bradley Bill, and Christoph Zingas. Well, what you're talking about with the luxury tax, in your mind, not necessarily the Wizards' mind, but in your mind, if there was one out of that, what do you call it, the solid three? Is that what you call them? If, yes, sir. <laughs> if there was one of the solid three that you think should be the most available, is it Kuzma or is it KP? That's a good question, man, because on one hand, you want to say Kyle Kuzma, because if you look at Kyle Kuzma's game, his game has evolved from his days as a Los Angeles Laker. You know, when he came to D.C., he, he's become a more complete player. You know, he, he can put the ball on the floor. You know, he's starting to pass. His stream point percentage is better. He's, he's, he's just a lot better, more complete player than he was with the Los Angeles Lakers. But in the flip side, with Christoph Bazingas, you know, it's never been a, a talent issue with him. It's always injuries. You know, he's always injuries with him. So with him proven – now, I know that he's out right now, which is kind of crazy that we're talking about injuries. But overall, this season, he has been very healthy. And he's played at an all-star level. So you can say if, you know, if we were going into, hypothetically, we're going to a rebuild, you would want to try to get assets for both. You know, because just the fact that I think both of them have good value right now. So I think you get a first-round pick for either one. But with them, it's, it's funny. It really is it's a good question because both these guys have player options. So right now the Wizards are trying to bank on the fact that they're trying to keep these guys here. But really the ball's in their court, no pun intended. You know, they, they hold all the cards as far as staying in D.C. long term. And that's why, I you know, I'm not a big fan of this trade, uh, sending Rui Hachimura away, because you just got rid of the top scoring option off the bench. So it's going to make things harder for the team going forward and make it less attractive for Kyle Kuzma and Chris Porzingis to stay long term. So I would flip Kyle Kuzma easily. I think his value is very high, and I think you could easily get a first-round pick and maybe a player or two for him. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about and dive into the perceived value or, or what you think Kyle Kuzma costs. But before we get into that, I read a report on uh, on social media yesterday claiming that Kyle Kuzma was not available. My initial reaction to that was this is posturing by the Wizards to try and raise value. Am I right in that? I, Kyle Kuzma is not untouchable. I don't think anybody on this roster is untouchable I th to a certain degree. I think nobody's untouchable. <laughs> you know, the, I think that adds to the frustration when it comes to Wizards fans is that this organization has proven they're not very transparent and letting them know what they're, you know, what they're trying to do. And I, I get it. You don't want to show all your cards to other teams. But in the same fashion, it's like, you know, we need to know where the vision's at. I, you best believe that Kyle Kuzma should be available because, I mean, like I said, his, his value is at all-time high. You know, like I said earlier, Complete different player from L.A. You know, he came to D.C., you know, it's uh, year two for him being in D.C., and he's really proven to be a scoring threat in his league. And I think that he needs to be in consideration for an All-Star because he really evolved his game. But you got to ask yourself, if I'm the Wizards and I'm already trading Bradley Bill to a Supermax, do I really want to give Kyle Kuzma 20 to $25 million? Because it's going to inhibit your chances of really keeping KP here. And again, you have uh, Daniel Gaffer going into an extension next year. So it's just the, the math doesn't really add up. But yeah, if I'm going to move somebody, I'm moving Kyle Kuzma. Because easily you can get a couple of role guys back. And you can possibly get a first round pick. Because using the Rudy Gobert trade as kind of a measuring stick is where trades are now. If he can get that haul, we can at least get a first round pick for Kyle Kuzma. So that, that's, you know, that's kind of where my head is at with this potential trade. So is the first round pick, is that the starting point or is it first round pick and a certain player type of player? Like what in your mind is negotiations don't really start until 
this is the offer or this is what we're discussing to really get the conversation going? I would like to start with a first round pick because if you look at our first round picks, we really don't have a meaningful first round pick due to protections till 2028. So, I mean, if you're if you really want to build for the future as opposed to keep contending, you want to get some picks. But if you look at the needs for the Washington Wizards, you know, Monte Morris at point guard has been solid, but I, I've always been a big believer that he's best served on the second unit. Um, I would try to get a true point guard, a guy, a floor general who can kind of orchestrate his offense. And I would get a three and D wing. You know, Denny Afia, while he can defend at a high level, he's not a true three and D wing. You know, his shot, you know, he worked out uh, with a trainer, Drew Hanlon, this all season. And there was a lot of hope in Wizards Nation that he would have an approved three-point shot, but his three-point shot just hasn't responded. And very often than not, a lot of teams just kind of let him shoot. <laughs> you know, just watch him shoot. You know, it's just, so we need a true three and D. We need a guy. We need shooters. You know, because like I said, if we're intent on building around Bradley Bill in this core, you need shooters. So we need a guy who's going to stretch the floor and defend at a high level. So that's, you know, if we're not going to be able to, to procure our first-round pick, I would definitely try to get a three and D wing or a point guard. Well, let's uh, take a look at the Sacramento Kings roster a little bit. In your mind, like if you're looking at the Kings roster and we're, we're talking about Kyle Kuzma negotiations, now we don't have to negotiate a trade necessarily between the two of us, but I'm just curious in your mind what the Wizards would be interested in talking about needing a backup point guard, talking about needing shooting. Uh, there are a lot of players on this roster that I feel pretty comfortable saying that the Kings would not make available simply because they don't want to ruin the good thing that, that's, that's happening right now. But in terms of like a, like a backup point guard scenario, is Davion Mitchell someone who is a blip on the radar? In terms of shooting, the Kings do have some shooters on this roster. So in your mind, looking at this roster and saying, okay, if Kyle Kuzma is a part of the deal, I want a first-round pick. And the Kings have their first-round pick situation a little muddied too because of the Kevin Herter trade. But I want a future first-rounder and this player or this guy or a combination of these guys. Like, what are you looking at? Oh, man. <laughs> I, if I had to choose, it would be centered around maybe a first-round pick, but I'm definitely getting Davion Mitchell. And I'm trying to get Keegan Murray, man. I like Keegan Murray. I'm a big fan of his game. I think he's slowly starting to build up and be a, a – he's going to be a force in this league. I, I really liked him coming out of the draft. So, yeah, if, if we're going to give up Kyle Kuzma, I would definitely ask for Keegan Murray and Davion Mitchell back. Now, Kevin Herter is intriguing. You know, he's a University of Maryland product, so he's a local cat. Um, 15 and a half points a game. You know, shooter. So Kevin Herter would be somebody that I wouldn't mind on the in Wizards uniform. But yeah, if, if we're intent on trading Kyle Kuzma, Keegan Murray would be the asking point, in my opinion. He'll be one of the first people I will talk about coming back to DC. You know, Brandon, that doesn't surprise me at all. But I'm honestly going to tell you how I think that conversation would go. I think Monty McNair immediately stops the conversation, and and that's in my opinion. Now, I'm <laughs> that, that might seem like disrespectful towards Kyle Kuzma, uh, but and, and it's not necessarily intended to be. But again, that speaks to the Kings have a good thing going here and they probably don't want to necessarily muddy that up if the kings are going to try and acquire kyle kuzma they're trying to do it in the sense that they don't necessarily need kuzma's offense but he's just another piece that turns this team into maybe a, a championship contender a year or two uh down the road and solidifies their playoff spot so i would say uh, keegan murray is off the table kevin herter might even be too but that seems a little extreme for me just just to say because of how important he is to the offense Davion Mitchell, I think there is a chance. So, I mean, I don't know in your mind, like if Davion Mitchell in a, in a first round pick, uh, whether protections, unprotected, whatever it is, like, is that something that the Wizards laugh and hang up the phone? Or is that something you think they consider? Well, in my humble opinion, they probably would go for it because the GM is just, yeah, you know, yet last uh, yesterday proved that he just, I'll say this before the, the Rui Hutchmer trade, Tommy Shepard was a good trading GM. Now, drafting as a whole, another conversation. You know, he he really hasn't hit on any of his first round picks. And I think that's why a lot of people are skeptical with him getting these three second round picks because we really don't value or gotten value out of our first round picks. So, you know, looking at second round picks, why would we expect them to find a diamond in the rough with second rounders? Because if you look at the string of uh, second rounders that the Wizards have have traded or not traded, drafted, None of them have played for the team. <laughs> they, they've all been overseas acquisitions. or So, yeah, I, I think that with the trade with the Lakers, we have an influx of guards now. Before we had a log jam at the forward position. Now with, you know, Kendrick Nunn, we have too many guards now. So, you know, I would love Davion Mitchell, but we would have to get rid of a couple of guards to do that. And really, I think the starting point with that would be, I would ask the Kings to choose between either DeLon Wright, which I know you guys are familiar with, and Monte Morris because – yeah. You know, if you 
Oh, I mean, you guys are very familiar with Delon, but you know, if you look at our guard position, our uh, situation, we we are big believers in Jordan Goodwin. You know, two way player, uh, G League guy. He he has really came to his own this year. Like I said, Monty Morris has really settled into the distributor role at starting point guard position. And Delon Wright, you know, he's been one of the most important acquisitions we've had this year because, you know, his defense, his three point shot, his leadership, his defensive prowess. You know, when he went out with, with injury. You know, this team took a step back defensive-wise. And when he came back, the team really rallied around the defensive system of West Unseld. So, yeah, it's a tough situation. I would love Davon Mitchell, but it would have to take us getting rid of a couple guards. And really, for the Wizards, who do you who are the two guards you choose? You know, so good question. Like I said at the top of the show, today's episode of the Locked on Kings podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL playoffs are here, and we're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked on because they're the number one sports book in America I'm talking about FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports Fun and easy. New customers right now can join today and get started with a $150 bonus in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on to take advantage of that deal. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. Now, there's a ton of fun betting around the NFL, but of course, Sacramento Kings fans, you can bet on the Kings, not just game money lines but but future bets and things like that on FanDuel you can bet on any NBA game plus so many other sports it's all on an app that's safe secure and super easy to use so football fans don't miss out place your first five dollar bet to get 150 dollars in free bets win or lose at FanDuel.com slash locked on make every moment more with FanDuel official sportsbook partner of the NFL for me personally I look at the Wizards and I look at the Kyle Kuzma situation, and my honest reaction is, if I were advising the Wizards, my honest reaction is, I think you can find a better trade partner than the Kings, in my opinion. I think I think you, you could get more value for Kuzma in a different market than you could in Sacramento just because of Sacramento's situation. Plus, Kuzma, again, is not going to be traded to an organization that necessarily needs him as much as org- other organizations might need him. So uh, let us let me switch gears a little bit to, to Denny a little bit because you brought up he's not necessarily a true 3 and D. The, the three-point shooting is a concern. But defensively, the Kings, that is a big need. So the defense, I know, would be intriguing to Sacramento. In your mind, what is Denny's value? What is a, Where is a conversation trade-wise in terms of what Washington would be interested in where does that start um I, I guess it depends on the system and the team you know what kind of situation is he walking into you know Denny he can defend at a high level you know last year he was shutting down players like Giannis and the Cooper I mean he can defend at a high level you know he can defend point guards to centers so he can definitely defend I think the thing with Denny is confidence you know he's starting to become a guy who's driving the lane with confidence but you know confidence has been his biggest issue since he's been in the league, because, you know, if you think about it, he came from a league in Israel where he was one of the top dogs to the NBA, where, you know, other than your top echelon guys, you're just one of the guys. And that's been an adjustment moment for him. But his three point shot is a concern. You know, you want to see a lot more consistency from his three point shot, because, you know, I mean, if you if you watch him, teams are just letting him shoot. So, you know, we're, people aren't really scared of his three point shot. So looking at maybe going to the Kings, it would be a good move for you guys, because. He's, you know, he doesn't have to shoulder a lot of the offensive burden. You know, he's there for his defense. So if you're able to get 10, 15 points out of him, and he can rebound at a high level. So, yeah, I think it'll be a win-win for you guys. You know, you, you're really not dependent on him to be a scorer. Or, you know what I mean? You know, he's there to be a defensive stopgap. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Defensive-wise, he's an outstanding player. It's just the confidence and him really having a confident and consistent jump shot. So you've talked about the need, the need for shooting. Terrence Davis is a shooter that's potentially available. Rashawn Holmes is a big, not not to do with shooting, completely different category. Rashawn Holmes is a backup center uh, that's available too. Are, are, we're talking about these two players, whether it's one or both of them. First off, any interest from you. Second off, is that like the level of expectation for player to receive in a Denny trade? Or do you think the Wizards would want more or better than that? Unfortunately, I'll say this. Um, we tend, and I think we are, overvaluing our young core. You know, when I say young core, Johnny Davis, mm-hmm. Corey Kispert, and Denny and Rui. Because if you see the fact that 
the Wizards tried to trade Rui to the Phoenix Suns and, for Jake Crowder, and they said no. You know, maybe we're overvaluing our guys. You know, so if we're able to get maybe a good guy back, I I would be happy because, like I said, a defensive guy who can't shoot. It's if you look at the NBA now, it's a perimeter centric league. You know, you you have centers now who can shoot three point shots. You know, it's not like it was back in the day when you had Patrick Ewing where your center just set set in the paint. You know, it, this is a very perimeter centric league now. So you want to see you know guys that have a consistent shot. But so I, I would say that getting a, a premium guy back, maybe at point guard, maybe at three and D, maybe you know I'm I'm very intrigued by Terrence Davis. Big fan of his game. And with Sean Holmes, you know, if you look at the fact that the Wizards are employing a bigger lineup, you know, we got two centers playing right now. We got KP at the four and Daniel Gafford at the five. So I'm not opposed to maybe another center being added to this roster either because Taj Gibson is older. You know, he has lost a step. And I definitely think we could use another center. So I'm very intrigued with Holmes and Terrence Davis. Brandon, first off, I don't think you're doing anything wrong at all by overvaluing their, your core. Everybody does it in every situation, and I think that's how most general managers also have to approach the situation, too, to try and get max value, especially in trade conversations. So I wouldn't feel bad at all by overvaluing the core. I certainly do it here in Sacramento. Uh, but the, the last question that I have, this is like, branching into fairy tale land and I and I understand it and I don't think this would ever be a conversation between the Kings and the Wizards. But Bradley Beal has been a topic of trade conversation, the blockbuster trade conversations for years, right? And I'm sure you guys are almost exhausted by it in Washington with how many teams are talking about trying to land Bradley Beal in a big trade. But like where does that conversation even start? Like Bradley Beal is not being traded unless we are getting it's it's better than what Rudy Gobert's package was, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you got to look at Bradley Bill has a unprecedented contract. You know, he has a no trade clause. If you look at it, Stephen Curry doesn't have no trade clause. <laughs> I'm just I'm the same. You know, if you add the trade kicker, you know, it's going to be a hard contract to move. You know, I think that we set too long on Bradley Bill. You know, if you look at the last offseason where the, the Golden State Warriors had the two picks, I believe it was number seven, number 14. They're off in Wiseman and Wiggins. I was screaming for the Wizards to take that because. It's, it's going to be hard. You know, the fact that we were able to move off the John Wall contract and then move off the Russell Westbrook contract. And if you look at the history in D.C. with Supermaxes, you know, we, we gave Gilbert Arenas to Supermax. He got hurt. And that really held his franchise down for half a half a decade, if not more. Then you look at John Wall. We gave him the Supermax. He got hurt. And so it just it seems like management is kind of falling into the same trap. So it, it's going to be a hard one. But I think that's not going to be untradeable. You know, Bradley Bill is still a player that defense is playing against. You know, he is still a good scorer in this league. Now, his statistically wise, his stats are going down a little bit. He's getting older. And you look at two guards. Two guards is one of those positions where longevity is an issue. You know, point guards have a long shelf life in the NBA. But two guards, you know, they they tend to they're kind of like running backs in the NFL. You know, they have that they have a shorter shelf life. So yeah, it's it's not untradeable, but he would have to he would have to be, you know, okay with the trade, obviously with a no trade clause. So it's it's, it's tricky. They, they 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 gave a lot of you know power to Bradley Bill. And if you look at the fact that you know he is included in discussions when it comes to acquiring players, I just I think that's a part of the problem of DC too. You know, you got I think that just like we complain about Dan Snyder with the Washington Commanders, you know, you gotta let the foot, you know, we always complain about him not letting the football people do their job. I think in DC with the Wizards, we need to let the basketball people do their job. Let the GM do his job and let the playing be done to Bradley Bill. Too much power for the guy, man. But yeah, I, I don't see us moving on because it's outside of a few teams, maybe L.A., the Lakers, but, you know, because Tommy Shepard has a good relationship with the Lakers. If you look at the, how many trades he's had with them, but I just I, it's going to be a tough one, man. It's going to be a tough one to move. Well, we'll pay attention to see if the Wizards do anything more with the trade deadline. Maybe the Kings and Wizards will be trade partners. We'll have to see on that. Brandon, you do an excellent job over there on Locked On Wizards. It's a pleasure to have you take the time here. Uh, and chat about these hypothetical trade scenarios. I appreciate it. Best of luck the remainder of the season, and hopefully we're chatting again uh, pretty soon, my friend. Thank you again. Big thank you to Brandon for joining me here on the Locked on Kings podcast. Really appreciated his perspective. Now I'll share with you my thoughts on, on trading for Kyle Kuzma, and maybe you picked on it up on it a little bit uh, in, in that conversation. Uh, I don't think the Kings need Kyle Kuzma. I don't. And, and like I told Brandon, I think there are much better trade partners out there for the Washington Wizards who – would be more willing to pay a little bit more, trade a little bit more to acquire Kuzma. For the Sacramento Kings, like Kuzma is exciting. He provides some really solid offense. He's certainly been a Kings killer in the past. 
But offense is not a problem for the Sacramento Kings. It's not. The Kings don't need more scoring. So would Kyle Kuzma be an upgrade, maybe over specific players? And if you're looking at this Kings starting lineup and acquiring Kyle Kuzma, maybe he becomes your starting four and that boots Keegan Murray to the bench. I'm not trading Keegan Murray for Kyle Kuzma. Sorry. Maybe he becomes your starting three and you boot Harrison Barnes to the bench. I'm not trading Harrison Barnes for Kyle Kuzma. I'm sorry. Like that's, that's where I'm at at this point in time. I just don't think Kyle Kuzma is the right target for the Sacramento Kings at this point in time. It's not because I don't like Kyle Kuzma or like his game or think that he wouldn't help the Kings. It's just because it doesn't make sense. I just don't think that's the move. It does not. That is from my understanding of Monty McNair. That is not a Monty McNair move. Could be wrong. He could prove me wrong and actually try and be active in acquiring Kyle Kuzma. But then again, I don't see the Sacramento Kings trading too much of value in order to acquire Kuzma. I talked about with Brandon there the idea of maybe making uh, like a first round pick and uh, Davion Mitchell available in that trade. He seemed to like that idea. But even so, like if I'm trading Davion Mitchell, I have a question mark at backup point guard. I mean, maybe Malik Monk, who's been a primary ball handler, could could handle that position. You still have Matthew Della Vadova. But again, this Kings team struggles defensively, and you're giving up your best defender for an offensive player. It doesn't make sense for the Sacramento Kings, in my opinion. So I don't think the Kings are going to be really involved in any Kyle Kuzma sweepstakes. That's just my opinion. But I think it's still worth having the conversation. And we learned a lot about the uh, the value um, or at least from Brandon's perspective, what the Wizards would want for Kuzma and maybe how more willing they'd be to move on from a Kyle Kuzma or move on from players if it makes sense to kind of restart that franchise a little bit. So really appreciate Brandon. I want to hear your thoughts now on a potential Kyle Kuzma trade. You for it? You against it? Uh, what would you make available? Let me know at Matt George Sack on Twitter. Email me Matt George Sports at gmail.com or leave your thoughts in the YouTube comment section down below. Also, if there are other teams that you want me to do podcasts like this on it with the build up to the trade deadline uh, to talk about them as potential trade partners and any specific players that you'd like me to uh, talk about, like I, I would love to do one with the Chicago Bulls. I would love to find out like what certain players on the Chicago Bulls roster, what their asking price would be or what their going price would be and what the Chicago Bulls think or at least the Bulls' perspective on the Kings roster and the trade assets that the Sacramento Kings have. So would love to do one on that. If you want to hear a Bulls podcast and see a Bulls podcast, leave me, uh, let me know. Any other teams that you want, please let me know about that. I uh, really would appreciate it. And then a reminder, tomorrow, Kings and Raptors, of course, we'll have a post-game pod. I'll be at the Golden One Center. If you're going to that game, we'd love to see you. and love to say hi, so let me know if you're going to the game. Uh, and then on Friday, I'm planning on doing my first ever live Locked on Kings podcast. Uh, so I hope you will join me for that. I'll, I'll give more details about when that's going to be a little bit later on. Uh, in the week on my social media that's at Matt George Sack and I'll probably post something on on YouTube as well uh, for you YouTube viewers so you know when it's going to be uh, going live so appreciate your support again let me know what you think about the Kyle Kuzma possibility of a trade uh, and I uh, can't wait to have you join me on the next episode of Locked on Kings until then my name is Matt George you have been listening to the Locked on Kings podcast part of the Locked on Podcast Network